all right hey guys welcome back to the tutorial and in the last tutorial we started to set up our dynamic forwarding for our api gateway and in this tutorial we're going to go ahead and make this even more dynamic so we will not have this hard-coded http localhost 3001 we're going to derive this from the api name the way we're going to do this is by um storing our configurations in a file um, you can store these anywhere you can store these in a database or um, in memory if you want if you would like but I want to store them in a file because it it'll be the easiest way for me to do this and I don't have to set up a database or anything like that so we'll just store it in a JSON file so if we go to our routes folder and create a new file and call it registry.json all right so in this registry is where we will register all of our APIs that we want to use. So the API gateway will look to this file to figure out where to forward the um, request. So let's go ahead and create our JSON object. And here we're going to have services. These services are just going to be the list of APIs. So um, let's go ahead and create a test API inside of here we're going to pass in the configurations so for our fake API this would be the host this would be the port and that's the API name so let's go ahead and get those that information into the configuration so let's start off with the API name and the API name will be test API for this instance all right and then we need the host the host is HTTP slash four slash uh, local host and then we need to get the port the port will be 3001 and then last but not least I'm going to add the URL which puts these two together that way I don't have to uh, pretty much concatenate this when we were actually making the call. So we're going to go HTTP slash slash local host. And then we're going to go 3001 with a slash. All right. So this is our configuration. This is all we need in order to forward our request. So we can leave this registry.json file. And now we're going to use that configuration here to actually make the forward. So we need to first import our registry file. So we'll just call this registry. And we're going to require that file we just created, which is dot slash registry dot JSON. All right. So now we have our file with the configuration information in it and now we just need to pretty much replace this with the call to that all right so we're going to erase that we're going to go with the let me just erase everything so not too confusing all right so we're going to use our registry object grab the services and then we need to pass in that request params api name which is this here in this case it'll be test api is what we're going to be using for right now so when we make a call um to our api gateway we're going to pass in this api name so this registry services will check to see if this uh params api name is in here if it is then we'll use it to um forward the request so let's go ahead and use our URL because that's what we need. So we're getting the URL parameter from this uh, test API. So that's that. And now we also need to pass in the path to what resource we want. So we need to add a parameter to our router.all call up here. So we're just going to add a path parameter. All right. And then we do the same thing that we did for API name up here. And we just pass in the path. So now when you call this API name, it's going to use the API name to get the configuration. 
and then it's going to pass this path on to the end of the once the configuration is loaded so it's going to go through here get the configuration and then it's going to get the url from that configuration and then add on the path to the end of that that way we can make a full call to the new url and get the response back all right so i'm going to save this and test it out to make sure that this works before we move forward um, we're going to use our curl command curl http slash slash localhost and then we're going to call 3000 because we want to call our gateway and then we're going to call test api that is this portion here the api name and then we need to pass in a path so we'll just call fake api which is the path to this endpoint all right so now when we make this call we should get hello from a, a fake api server so this is correct this is how we want to do it um the only issue with the way we have it now is if this api name doesn't exist then we're going to get a nasty error so we need to go ahead and add a pretty much a null check for this so first let me confirm my suspicions that we will get an error so let's just put fake api here because this this fake api does not exist in this registry we only have test api so um let's make a call to this we should get an error and we do because it doesn't exist so let me clear that so it doesn't matter what you put here in this place it's not going to work unless it actually exists in that registry file so if we put if we put tray here still same thing so it doesn't matter as long as um that doesn't exist so we don't want to have this error we want to be able to handle this error before it even happens so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this registry.services.api name. If we get this and we add a check before we um, call this Axios method, then we could um, not do it if we don't want to. So we're going to say if this exists, then we want to make this Axios call. Otherwise, just don't do anything. Right now, we're not handling any errors, we're not error handling, we're not responding. Um, let's just, actually, we will add a response. So let's just say if, if that, then respond that. Otherwise, respond dot send, and we're just gonna send a, um, a message, uh, API name doesn't exist. All right. Oh, I need to do this in the else block. My mistake. Oh, actually, I don't think I need to do this in the else block. I think we're good. Okay. So, now let's try it again with Trey. API name doesn't exist. See that? That's uh, how we do when we don't have it. Now let's try it with a correct API that actually exists. This test API. All right. Uh, I'm going to put this in the else block. All right, let's try it now. Hopefully, there we go. All right, so we're good now. Um, so basically, it's gonna check if the API name exists. If it does, then we will actually run this Axios. Otherwise, we'll just send back that the API name does not exist. All right, so I think this is pretty good for this tutorial. Um, we have everything set up. Now we can register our APIs to the gateway and we can forward the requests. So in the next tutorial, um, we will see what is wrong with this approach that we have right now. But until then, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to the video and all that jazz. And I will see you guys in the next one.